Hello Minions! Welcome to another episode of Modern Warfare Weapon Tactics. In this episode, we're going to cover engagement tactics for the FAL so that you can maximize your ability to succeed with this weapon. In this video on engagement with the FAL, we're going to cover four main topics. The first one is going to be utilizing cover while engaging the enemy. The second is using precise fire to maximize the damage potential of the FAL. The third is going to be using a secondary weapon for CQB to help avoid some of the pitfalls and weaknesses of the FAL. And the final category we're going to cover is when to disengage or when to run away so that you don't get yourself killed when using a weapon with so many weaknesses like the FAL. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. Hostiles of Bravo, go! So let's start by talking about utilizing cover when we're engaging with the FAL. The first thing that we want to briefly discuss is cover versus concealment. For those of you who've been around a while, you've seen maybe my Wheezy's War College episode that talks about using cover. We're not going to focus as much on the weaknesses of concealment in this case, but it is important to know the difference. So cover means that you're hiding or using something in front of you that bullets cannot penetrate. And concealment means that you're essentially just hiding behind something that you can actually be shot through. So for using the FAL, both of these can actually provide us value, but obviously cover is going to be more valuable than concealment because anything that protects us from being shot is better than something that does not protect us from being shot. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. So I can use these two interchangeably as we go forward. Um, but that's basically what we're discussing, is putting objects between you and the enemy in a way that helps you to increase your chances of survival. So as we discussed briefly in map movement, um, actually kind of in depth in map movement, moving cover to cover is going to be an extremely important part of using the FAL. Now, it's important with every weapon, but especially with the FAL where your time to kill is higher than normal and your engagement time, um, at least the ability to kind of quickly respond to threats is, is reduced and much more difficult than with a more flexible weapon like an AR or an SMG. So what we're aiming for when moving cover to cover is minimizing the amount of time we're out in the open, which would expose us to some of these faster time to kill weapons or higher rate of fire weapons. And we also want to avoid cover in general that will generate close quarters engagements. Because one of the main weaknesses of the FAL is its ability to kill in close quarters, we want to make sure that we're not, for instance, using a corner um, during cover in a short hallway where, the, where you are behind cover, but someone's most likely going to walk into your field of view while they're still really close to you. So cover's not going to help you much when people are two steps from you and they have a, an AR. So we want to make sure that moving cover to cover is something that, that helps us to move around the map, move towards the objectives, but at the same time that we don't put ourselves um, in a position where, once again, we put ourselves uh, vulnerable to the weaknesses that the FAL provides. Uh, another thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is anticipating enemy locations and finding cover that gives us a line of sight on the most common enemy locations, and preferably at engagement distances that we want. So with the FAL, we want medium to long-range engagements, preferably closer to long-range engage engagements. So when we're choosing cover, we want to try and find places that give us long lines of sight where we expect the enemy to appear further away. Again, going back to what we said about not creating close quarters engagements, if we find a good piece of cover, but the place we anticipate enemies arriving is going to be within the engagement distance that you kind of are trying to avoid of the FAL, then that's not as helpful. So you can think of these as overwatch positions or um, power positions, um, positions of advantage over the enemy. So one thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is not playing into the strengths of other weapons. Now, I'll touch on this as well when I talk about another point I want to make with cover, which is if you find a good piece of cover in an advantageous position, don't be in a hurry to move. We want to make sure that we're supporting the objective, but we understand, by the virtue of, that we've chosen the FAL as our weapon, that we're probably not going to be rushing into close quarters engagements like we would with a shotgun or an SMG, and then we're not going to be as versatile as we would if we took an AR with us. So, so make sure your engagements are deliberate and measured and don't let someone with an AR or an SMG uh, goad you into feeling like you should be running around to meet them face to face because they're going to win those battles, you know, nine times out of ten. So of course they don't want you to be using a position of cover 
as they're running through the open because if you guys meet face to face out in the open and they've got an AR and you've got an FAL, they're just going to melt you, right? And they're going to feel really good about it. If you take a position of cover and you engage them from a distance as they move out into the open and you, you know, take two or three uh, good shots and down them, then they're probably going to be a little upset at you and they'll, they're, they're going to lash out, call you a camper, call you whatever. Um, but this is the reality of playing intelligently with the weapon. People who are using the FAL running out and playing like that, trying to get close quarters engagements and not quote unquote be a camper, are not doing well. And that's why most people use SMGs and ARs because they don't know or don't want to play tactically. And so if you're going to run out in the open, then you need to have an AR and SMG to even give yourself a chance at survival. So so don't play into their strengths. Allow yourself to play to the strengths of the FAL. You need slow, deliberate engagements at medium to long distance. And so when you find a good position, make sure that you use it as much as you can until you start to realize that people are going to be coming back to hunt you down, right? That's where moving tactically can help as well. Take a, take a, uh, a good position. Once you eliminate two or three people, realize that someone's probably going to come back for a revenge kill and you should probably relocate to another advantageous position. So we want to reemphasize we're using cover to support the objective. In game modes like uh, TDM, really mainly just TDM, um, obviously the objective is to kill people, so using cover is, is advantageous and moving tactically is advantageous the entire time. When you're playing something like Domination or uh, Kill Confirmed, when you really need to move, I mean Kill Confirmed, yes, it's a killing game mode, but you need to get those tags or else you're not helping your team, right? So. We want to make sure that we're moving tactically when we're supporting those engagements in objective-based game modes. You can use the FAL in objective-based game modes, although it's um, not as advantageous. We'll talk about that in another video, which, which game modes play to the strengths of the FAL. But as we're supporting those objectives, let's keep cover in mind as a critical component of our tactics. It's also really important to realize that if you take the FAL and you try to play it like other weapons, you're going to get yourself killed more times than not. You're going to end up with a negative KD. And while in objective game modes your KD doesn't necessarily matter, feeding the other team kills, feeding the other team kill streaks, and dying instead of helping your team protect the objective or capture the objective isn't really helping anyone. So if you're in an objective game mode and you're using the FAL, you understand its weaknesses, you need to play in such a way that you still make yourself useful without trying to pretend that you're going to be someone who can who can rush into a crowded room and and clear everyone out you're just not going to do that with the fal so so let's play smart and let's make sure that we're helping the objective the next topic we want to discuss is using precise fire now the fal is a high damage slow rate of fire high recoil weapon so what does this mean? That its weaknesses are basically the ability to kill quickly and its strengths are the ability to cause a lot of damage with each shot. So because of that we want to make sure that we are making every shot count because already our time to kill is going to be higher. I mean in a strict sense because of the power of the weapon its, its mathematical time to kill can be relatively low but in a practical sense with a human based semi-automatic rate of fire and the amount of recoil you're going to have, you're going to have a pretty slow time to kill versus other fully automatic weapons. So every shot needs to count. Every time you miss, when it takes two or three shots to down someone, if it takes you three shots to kill someone versus with, with no misses versus five shots with a couple of misses in there, you're going to dramatically decrease your ability to be successful. So we want to make sure that we're not rushing our shots when we're using the FAL and I say unless it's an emergency. And when I mean emergency, I mean if you get caught in close quarters, which again, we're trying to avoid that, but let, you know, shit happens. Somebody walks up on you and you're at point blank range of the FAL. The only thing you're really going to be able to do is spam the trigger and just hope that you get lucky. Um, so short of an, an emergency situation, um, make sure that you're not rushing your shots and find a cadence for shooting. Um, for those of you who been around a while, I did a, a video back in the day on... Um, the marksman rifles in in Battlefield, and I think it was Battlefield 3, it talked about finding a cadence for the weapon. With a semi-automatic weapon, you will discover that there is a natural cadence that you can use that will maximize your accuracy and your ability to do consistent damage. So um, it'll be different for each weapon. For the FAL, I can't necessarily tell you what your cadence is going to be. You'll have to find it naturally, and it can also depend on which attachments you use. 
high zoom uh, optics will will increase the amount of uh, recoil that your weapon has and that will slow your cadence down. Low magnification optics or iron sights will allow you to have a faster cadence because it reduces your recoil. That's a that's a balancing issue in the game. So um, I'll insert a clip here to give an example of how cadence works just to so that you can understand it more clearly. Okay, so getting back to other ways to use precise fire, Modern Warfare has has mechanisms for um, mounting, which are very helpful with the FAL as well. Um, cover in general, as we talked about in the first in the first section, is is going to be useful for us to allow us to be protected enough so that we don't have to rush our shots and so that we can get precise shots on the enemy. But mounting is even more helpful because it um, it stabilizes the weapon even beyond what the attachments can do. Sometimes this can be a problem for us if you get yourself mounted in a position where you limit your mobility. Um, but in general, when you have the opportunity, when you have an advent advantageous position and the ability to kind of lock yourself into some cover to defend an area, area or to uh, cover an area where you expect enemies to be moving a lot, using the mounting mechanic in Modern Warfare can be very helpful with a high recoil weapon like the FAL. All weapons in general, but especially for the FAL. And then the last thing that you can do to help keep your fire as precise as possible is to select attachments that help with this. Um, you want attachments that will reduce your recoil, like you can use different grips and barrels that will help with recoil control. We will cover all of this in more detail in an actual loadouts video for the FAL. Um, but while we're talking about precise fire, it's important to talk about the fact that attachments can help. The other thing that you can focus on is, uh, depending on your play style, if you want a faster cadence and a faster time to kill and it doesn't affect you greatly, use a low magnification optic. A simple red dot sight, like the uh, GI Mini red dot sight, will have significantly lower recoil than a magnified optic like, optic, like a 3x magnifier or even a sniper scope. As part of the balancing mechanism in this game, the developers don't want you to be zoomed in really close across the map on someone who's really far away and have absolutely no recoil. That would be that would be really unfair. So the way that they balance it is if you're using a low recoil or a low magnification optic, you get less rate recoil than a high magnification optic. The important thing to know is putting attachments on the FAL to mitigate its weaknesses is going to be a critical component of this. And it's part of why you might get frustrated starting out with the FAL. When you don't have attachments unlocked and you're just using the stock FAL, you're not going to be able to help control that recoil. You're not going to be able to mitigate you know, all of the, the disadvantages that it has. So you're gonna have to use smart map movement and cover and mounting points to do that. But as you progress with the FAL and you un uh, unlock more and more attachments for it, you'll be able to really tailor it to help eliminate some of those weaknesses that it has. And um, we can discuss one of the uh, attachments a little bit later on where, um, where you can actually unlock the burst mode, um, but we'll cover that here in a second. The next topic we wanna cover is a way to mitigate the close quarters weaknesses of the FAL, which is to use a secondary weapon when you enter close quarters. And when I say a secondary weapon, primarily what I mean is with the FAL, you would definitely be, uh, it would definitely be in your best interest to use overkill, the overkill perk, and to take a second primary weapon with your loadout, especially if you're trying to play a role that more aggressively supports objective modes. Um, you are going to run into situations where you will be in close quarters. Let's say your team isn't capping a point at B or you want to support that B cap. Getting in there with the FAL might just be you being a sacrificial lamb because you're not going to be able to fight if you're there. You might just be an extra body on the flag and maybe that can help. But what could be even more helpful if you're not being dependent on a tier two perk like UAV jammer, um, to have a secondary weapon that's an SMG or a shotgun that complements the weaknesses of the FAL so that when you know you're going to be entering a situation where uh, you're going to be potentially encountering close quarters, you can go ahead and switch to that weapon in anticipation of that so that you hopefully don't get as outmatched. 
pistols are an option, but unlike in a game like Modern Warfare 2, when uh, we, we had these shotgun secondaries and all of this ridiculous unbalanced secondaries, the, the secondary weapons in uh, Modern Warfare are, are very well balanced, and they're, they're pistols, you know, and not machine pistols. They're, they're you know, small, low-power, semi-automatic weapons. And as far as I'm concerned, you've got in your pocket with the FAL a large semi-automatic weapon, right? So if you're going to try and rely on a pistol in close quarters, yes, you can get faster shots with some of the pistols, you know, the, the lower power pistols. Um, but I, I really think at that point you're just better off using the FAL. If you're going to be relying on a semi-automatic weapon, take the FAL's higher damage as opposed to a pistol. Um, you want, you know, you want your pistols there in case your primary runs out of ammo and you've got nothing left and a fast switch is better than a reload. So short of that, let's go ahead and, and what I've done is, is a lot of times used the overkill perk and a secondary primary, a primary secondary to, to help do that. And in this instance, you may also think about the FAL as a secondary weapon in that same instance. Let's say you want to use something like a shotgun or, or an SMG and you understand that they have weaknesses at longer ranges. This could allow you to put the FAL as that secondary role for a longer range weapon. Um, but for the purposes of obviously talking about the FAL, we're going to treat those other weapons uh, as secondary, as my dog gives a nice sneeze. Um, so, so again, we can adjust our loadouts to try and work for these things, but in general, a powerful thing that we can do to mitigate the weakness in close quarters of the FAL is to just go ahead and take a completely different weapon for when we're going to run into people. Although, as I alluded to early on, um, later in the unlock tree for the FAL, you will actually unlock a perk attachment that is burst fire for the FAL. This is actually an attachment that I really loved for the FAL in it, and it made it a much more versatile weapon, but still kept it effective at longer ranges. I was still able to use it in like ground war matches with the burst fire and engage people at really long range. Um, but it but it made it so that the FAL wasn't completely useless at close range. When someone's in super close quarters with you and you can pull the trigger once and get a three round burst out of the FAL, you'll actually find that it can really one burst people at close range. So with that one notable exception, when you've unlocked the burst fire perk for the FAL, um, that actually gives the FAL the ability to be more effective in close quarters and can open up that second perk slot so you don't have to use overkill. I still wouldn't recommend the FAL as a close quarters weapon in that, in that case, but considering that we're mostly, when we select the FAL, anticipating that close quarters engagements are going to be a, an emergency situation, not something that we're actively looking for, um, the burst fire in the FAL is actually pretty adequate for doing that. So the last thing that we're going to talk about with the FAL is when to disengage. So yes, in the video on engagement, we're going to talk about not engaging, which is actually an extremely important tactic when you're using the FAL. What we want to do is live to fight another day. As we've talked about, and as you're probably well aware if you've been playing any amount of Modern Warfare, the FAL is just outclassed by the most common weapons, ARs and SMGs. Um, are the most common thing that you'll find in the game, especially ARs, especially ARs like the M4 and the Kilo 141. These weapons are just more versatile, they're easier to use in general, they're more forgiving, and so we do not want to play into their strengths, and in our case with a slower time to kill, that means knowing when to run away. And so the easiest way with the FAL, because of its slow time to kill, because of its high recoil, and because of how important it is that we use precision fire, that we don't rush our shots, in general, I will say that the disengagement strategy for the FAL is if you start taking damage, move. Get out of there. Because especially if it's from a weapon like uh, an AR or an SMG, you're just, you're, I would say probably 80% of the time, you're just not going to win that battle. Once you start taking damage, their their higher rate of fire is just going to shred you, especially because the flinch is going to start knocking you off of target. Even with a perk that reduces that, which I honestly wouldn't recommend wasting a perk for the FAL on reducing flinch, because if you're getting shot, you're better off just running away. I don't care. Um, maybe that, I don't know, maybe that's a hard pill for you to swallow, but if you want to be effective and you want to use tactics and strategy as opposed to just trying to brute force it. I mean, I've, I've been there. I've done it. I've taken the FAL 
I hit guys with two shots. They're not dead. They'd spin on me. I start taking damage. I'm like, I can land one more shot right before they melt me. Sometimes I can. But I will tell you that the odds are drastically in their favor. It is probably, like I said, in my experience, it's probably 8 out of 10 times I lose that fight. And yeah, the 2 out of 10 times that I that I out outshoot them with my FAL, it feels good. Like, hey, yeah, suck it. Doesn't matter. It's not worth it. Because you're going to lose way more of those battles than you're going to win. So when you start taking damage, move. And when you move, what should you do? Do not repeat, right? Because taking cover... And then coming right back just means that now they're waiting. They're already pre-aimed at where you're going to reappear, and they will kill you even faster, right? So what you want to do is move, change to another position. Ideally, uh, change to another position to re-engage if that's an option. If you're behind, say, a box or something like that, and you can move from the left side to the right side, that may buy you a little bit of time to surprise them that you can get some shots off. Or if you can move to a completely different location, behind a wall or around a hallway or something like that, then that may be... A way that you can re-engage that enemy if killing them is something that's important either because it's a slayer game mode or because they're threatening the objective if it matters then then try and re-engage for a different position don't come back to the same location they're, they're it's just not going to work out for you the other option is just abandon the fight this is something that's taken me a while and some discipline and some learning to realize that statistically this is just the right move to make sometimes you start shooting at somebody they turn on you, you start taking damage, just fucking leave, right? Like, don't come back, let them go, go find a different part of the map and go engage a different enemy. This does a couple of things. One, it, it reduces the opportunity for them to, to anticipate where you're going to move to and re-engage you in a way that's advantageous for them. You're already at a disadvantage with the FAO. It's just true. And sometimes, so not only does it keep you safe, but it also can pause the other team. It can... People love to re-peek in Call of Duty. They, they take a little bit of damage, they go and they heal, and they want to peek back out. They want to say, I'm going to win this fight. How many times have you done that and you get melted in the face, right? How many times have you gotten hit by a sniper and been like, no, I've got him this time, and, and you jump back out and he just instantly murders you because now he knows where you're going to be? A lot of people will wait for the person to re-engage. So this is a good opportunity sometimes for you to just fuck off. Like, <laughs> like they'll be waiting for you to come back and you won't. And you'll be off killing two or three more people on their team while they're still waiting for you to walk around that corner or to reappear in that position. So sometimes the best thing to do is to, is to just disengage completely. Just say, you know what? I didn't win that fight. I'm going to move on to something that I can actually do better at. And I'm going to reiterate, do not re-peak. And this is true for every weapon in Modern Warfare. Um... You know, but in general, it's it's same thing. Statistically, sometimes you'll re-peak and you'll win that fight. But it's going to be a significantly small proportion of the time. So do not re-peak, especially with the FAL and its high recoil. You need precision shots. You need to not be rushed. And that means do not re-enter gunfights when people already know you're going to be there. It's just not going to turn out well for you. So that's it for our engagement portion of the FAL tactics for Modern Warfare. Just in quick summary, we went over utilizing cover, using precision fire, focusing on having a secondary weapon for close quarters engagements, if that's something that's going to be important to our playstyle, and knowing when to disengage when you're at a disadvantage with the FAO. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, make sure that you subscribe, go to wheeziesgaming.com, all of the things. You know where to find me. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and stay tuned for more episodes. Talk to you guys later.